So recently I decided to revive this baby in the interest of not building another cell because I wanted to build a a nice series cell and this was originally designed to be a true series cell. There's six compartments in there that are completely isolated from the other. Um, this is basically just a large stack of plexiglass um, cutouts. Um, it took a long time to design this and to perfect the cuts because you got close spacing and there's only a small margin of error because the gas needs to get out and each chamber must be completely electrically isolated from the other and over time it began to leak and every chamber wasn't exactly isolated so I abandoned it so it's just been sitting on a shelf. I decided to revive it because I was reading um, a paper written by a guy named Bob Boyce whose work I've been following for a while as far as videos are concerned but I never read his papers and his design says that you actually need a little bit of leakage between each chamber. Uh, in the interest of promoting that the cell will be homogeneous as far as resonance is concerned because each one of these is electrically isolated uh, they're not going to have the same electrical characteristics like precisely and for resonance um, it requires precise replication of electrical characteristics between each cell anyway that said we're not going to be using resonance to run this we're running it off of straight AC current from the house this is my diode rectifier. I built a little heat sink. I really didn't feel like going out and buying one, so I just took a piece of sheet metal and cut it in as many ways as possible so that it would let me take that off of there. So that it would uh radiate as much heat as possible and just drill the hole through it and then I just chuck it on a magnet right there so that it doesn't fly off the table because the wires will drag it down or whatever over here what you see here is a light bulb which I've covered with aluminum foil because it's really bright <laughs> and uh, having it shine in your face is no good um, it's a 200 watt light bulb I basically use that to limit the current so from right here, the uh, power comes in from the mains. I put a switch to turn it on and off. I run one half of the wire to the light bulb, and then that goes to one side of the rectifier. The other wire just comes right from the mains and goes to the other side of the rectifier. Then you got positive and negative, basically a 120 hertz pulse wave, give or take, you know. Not exactly a sine wave, but close enough to a sine wave. But uh, but it's a it's uh, a unipolar, so it's almost like straight DC, but it's pulse DC. So it's just running pulse DC into my seven plate series cell, and they're just a stack. They're not connected separately. It's just a stack of cells. This is the remains of a a filler tube which I designed. I uh, have it plugged with a screw <laughs> so that uh, the water doesn't leak out of there when uh, I turn the cell on. So that's it. You see, I got a copper uh, wire going to one plate. It's attached there. That's it. It's not attached to anything else on this cell except this end plate. And there's five other plates in the middle with electrolyte in between them and then you have the end plate and the negative side of the rectifier is connected to the end plate so I'll turn it on and I'll show you what we can get out of here we can't be putting in more than two amps of current at 113 volts because the 200 watt light bulb is limiting the amount of power you can put in there because the maximum power is two amps so you'll see that the, the bulb really it, it lights full brightness as far as I can tell so 
the cell itself couldn't be drawing a lot of current. At the moment, my multimeter is broken, and uh, I've been putting my money into building more cells. In the future, I will invest in a new multimeter so I can actually show you what exactly this cell is drawing as far as power. But I'm just going to turn it on and let it rip. Let me try to zoom in a bit. If you can see that one end chamber, it's cranking out gas pretty good. And, uh, you can see the other chambers in there. They're also putting out a lot of gas. You can see them really bubbling. The electrolyte is 100% saturated, meaning that I take distilled water, I heat it up in a microwave for about two minutes, about a quart of water, and then I add baking soda until it won't dissolve anymore. In fact, when I mix the electrolyte, uh, I actually add baking soda until it is just caked up on the bottom so that I know for sure that that, that water is 100% saturated with baking soda as far as it'll go at the temperature that I heat it to and then when it cools down then I add it to the cell and this is the first batch of electrolyte that I put in there and uh, after running this thing for about an hour it starts putting out more gas than when you first started it let me try to give you a shot of the inside of this baby You can see the separate chambers. There's two chambers right there. There's a third over there. Each one constitutes a cell, and you'll notice that the water does not spill over the top into the next chamber. Uh, that would constitute a short circuit, and then what would happen is that the end plate would short out to the other end plate, and you wouldn't get the effect of the current tra traversing all seven cells. You can see the light bulb. It's pretty bright. I'm not going to take that aluminum foil off because it'll cast a wicked glare on this uh, camera and my eyes as well. So I'm leaving that. It's a very simple setup. I hope to replace the light bulb with a capacitor in the future. I tried using an isolation transformer that I wound myself. This I got out of an old stereo. Uh, it was a big sucker of a transformer. So I figure I would isolate the power from the house to the cell by just having uh, a one-to-one -one ratio transformer. Why it doesn't work, I have no idea. Because it gets magnetic, you know, it gets a magnetic output. If I hold a magnet near there when I have it cranked up, you can feel it. Uh, you can feel the magnet vibrating from the uh, the AC, but for some reason it doesn't translate to the secondary. So that was a uh, bit of a failure. But as you can see, sometimes when things don't work at first, like this baby right here, it's good to have them around. And then later on, you might have some insight, such as hooking it straight up to the mains power and uh, you can revive things that previously did not work for your setup so that's a good lesson as far as designing cells and designing anything Just keep at it